Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm Nicholas from HQS Quantum Simulations, and today I want to tell you about our open source library structure for representing quantum and open quantum systems with the help of Rust. And a bit of motivation first. So HQS is a startup founded by four physicists from the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, and our mission is it to make the use of uh, high-level quantum simulations in industry more widespread. So that if an industry user wants to do a simulation for material science and chemistry, they are much more likely to use a high-level quantum method. And we want to do that by um, making the software more accessible for industry users, but also for academics who are not experts in simulation. And we want to offer um, a range of simulation uh, tools from uh, classical software that's uh, running on conventional computers to um, uh, quantum computing software. And if you want to know more about what we uh, use Rust in the, uh, how we use Rust in the quantum computing context, my colleague uh, Matteo Lodi is going to give a talk tomorrow about that. And last but not least, uh, one thing that sets us apart a little bit, we want to use the noise that is always found in current era uh, quantum computing devices as a resource and not just as a source of errors. Okay, so what does structure actually do uh, and what were our priorities for it? And also, why did we choose Rust? So as you've seen on the slide before, we want to uh, offer a whole range of uh, simulation solutions, and we want to make them as user-friendly as possible. Uh, and for that, we need to have a good way to exchange the definition of a quantum simulation that we want to do. Um, and the most important definition in that is uh, the definition of the Hamiltonian. And for all non-physicists here, what a Hamiltonian is, is basically a giant matrix. But typically, we don't really need to uh, store all of the elements of this giant matrix because um, quite often, or almost all of the time, the Hamiltonian is made up of uh, building blocks that are giant matrices that correspond to uh, specific physical concepts, like the Z0 here is a spin operator. Um, and then the Hamiltonian is more or less a sum over these um, contributions with some prefactors that would all be one here. Uh, and all for all the physicists, uh, what we need to be able to do is we need to represent spin degrees of freedom, fermionic systems, bosonic systems, and mixtures of those. So we want to be able to simulate all of that. And um, we also uh, need to be able to represent the open component of that. So a uh, quantum system uh, that is in contact with the rest of the universe, because this is what we get on noisy quantum computers. Um, and yeah, we need to uh, a way to store that as well. Okay, so the core functionality is an exchange library. So we need as a highest priority, good serialization support, uh, especially to JSON, because we want to uh, users to be able to uh, store the input, rerun the simulation without any problem on maybe a different tool three years later. And we also want to have good support for uh, REST communication over the network. Uh, then next priority is uh, we want to use Rust's type system to prevent building unphysical Hamiltonians. Even for experienced users, if you gradually build up a Hamiltonian, it's quite easy to um, uh, accidentally create an unphysical Hamiltonian that would crash a simulation or give nonsense results, and we prevent this with a type system. Um, and then uh, next priority is that we want to have some support for symbolic values, which is always nice for parameter sweeps. And as I mentioned before, we have these building blocks and then prefactors, and that basically means the prefactors can be uh, floating point values, or they can be the symbolic um, entities that uh, would be maybe a variable theta or could also be a simple expression like sine of theta. And the last point, <clears throat> we also want, of course, to have good performance. Performance is not the highest priority. This is not a numerical library, uh, but performance is still quite good. And we've used it for some post-processing and some papers that, papers that we published. So we still have good performance. Um, all right. So all of these priorities lead to some design decisions. And uh, finally, we are at the, uh, um, we see some code. So um, as I mentioned before, these Hamiltonians uh, have these big building blocks and some prefactors. And this structure uh, lends itself very nicely to a hash map representation. So the most important design decision is how we store information internally for this exchange library. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we use a hash map. And uh, these building blocks, if we have a closer look, um, what you have here is a building block for a so-called spin system. So what this corresponds to is you have a so-called X operator, some, uh, some X, some 
a physical uh, quantity that operates on site zero and a Z that operates on site three. And you can always build those up, these uh, giant matrices as a product of uh, such operators. And we will use these uh, products as keys. So we call them uh, operator products. And for a spin system, we, for example, have a custom data structure, which is a Pauli product that we can initialize to represent this contribution. And then we have another custom data structure, uh, which um, corresponds to the um, values in the hash map or the prefactors. And um, we call this calculator float because it can be just a float F64 value or the symbolic value, which is just stored internally as a string and then parsed separately. And then, yeah, when we uh, create a Hamiltonian, we can add these uh, combinations of key and value and store the um, Hamiltonian this way. Um, all right. So the title of the talk says it already. We are dealing with uh, also with open systems. Um, so it's a bit complicated, but just for the physicists, we describe the open quantum systems with the so-called Lindblad equation, which is equation of motion. What is important in general here is that to represent this interaction of uh, Hamiltonian of this quantum system with the environment, we store the Hamiltonian of it, and we need to store some additional information, some prefactors, and these A and AJ and AI, those are again these operator products I was talking about before. And this is nice because we can then again use a hash map representation and we basically just change the keys. Um, and the keys are now a tuple because we have two of those. And those uh, entries here in the tuple, they are just different operator products. So here we have a decoherence product. And then we can basically use the same design decision. All right. Um, then uh, the next decision we made is how do we serialize? Of course, one of the strengths of the Rust ecosystem, besides all of the other strengths, is the Serta serialization library. And um, we decided to just go with Serta because it gives us a wide range of uh, uh, serialization targets. The only thing is that we use some um, uh, specialized serialization data, uh, serialization structs, sorry, um, that customized internal representation a little bit to uh, deal with the fact that JSON typically doesn't deal well with uh, hash maps where the keys are not strings. So we changed this a little bit, but uh, yeah, otherwise we can just use vanilla Serta um, and that works really well. And so I'm getting to the end. I have no idea how I'm doing time-wise, sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so the last point of course was that we want to use the type system uh, to guarantee physical, um, physically sensible Hamiltonians. Uh, and to do that, we have a strict separation um, between something that is a Hamiltonian. So a Hamiltonian is a giant matrix that needs to be Hermitian. Um, and we uh, guarantee that by having a, this Hamiltonian data structure. And then, for example, when we're dealing with bosons, we have specific uh, structs for the keys that can only work with these Hermitian Hamiltonians. Sorry, Nicholas, that's oh. seven okay, minutes yeah. if you can sum up. Thanks. Yeah. That's, yeah, I'm uh, I'm basically at the end. Sorry, I kept a bit, uh, I lost a bit track of time. Um, yeah, that's uh, it. And if you have more questions about it, I'm uh, happy to answer them on the chat or in Gather Town. Thank you.